Dear students, now we are going to discuss Weinreich oscillator and its derivation in detail. Weinreich oscillator is a type of RC oscillator which consists of two stage amplifier circuit and a feedback network. The major advantage of this Weinreich oscillator over the RC phase shift oscillator is that the frequency can be varied by varying the values of capacitance in the feedback network. Okay, so that is the major advantage of this Weinreich oscillator. It is having very good frequency stability. In this Weinreich oscillator, a balanced Weinreich circuit can be used as a feedback network which does not produce any phase shift. As we all know that in any oscillator, the circuit should produce 360 degree phase shift. But in this one, the feedback does not produce any phase shift. So, two state CE amplifier or CS amplifier is used to produce 360 degree phase shift. So, this is the amplifier state. Here it is the feedback stage. Okay. So, in this amplifier, we can have two stage common emitter transistor amplifier circuit or common source field effect transistor circuit. In case of operational amplifier, we can use non-inverting op-amp. Do you all understand this one? So, this balanced circuit consists of one series arm, one parallel arm and one voltage divider circuit. So, here we can consider only the Weinreich circuit here. These two arms are very very important. Okay, that is the series arm and parallel arm. Series arm consists of R1 and C1 connected in series. Parallel arm consists of R2 and C2 connected in parallel. Both are connected in series here. We can give the input that is the output from the amplifier stage to this feedback network between 1 and 3 terminals and we can take the feedback signal across this Z2. Okay, here these two arms of the vein bridge are called as frequency sensitive arms because these two arms are used to determine the frequency range. By varying the values of the C1 and C2 simultaneously we can vary the frequency range. For that we can connect the C1 and C2 in a common shaft. Okay. Weinreich circuit is also known as lead lag network that means at low frequency it acts as a lead network that means the phase difference is leading one at high frequency the circuit acts as a lag network so here lead and lag refers the phase delay okay in this oscillator the two stage ce amplifier circuit is used to produce 0 degree or 360 degree phase shift that is the required condition for the sustained oscillation so this is the overall diagram of the Weinreich oscillator circuit okay so this is the feedback circuit this is the two stage CE amplifier circuits okay advantages of Weinreich oscillator it is having very good frequency stability at resonant frequency range Frequency may be varied in the range of 10 Hz to 100 kHz. It has low distortion. It provides very high amplitude stabilization. Here the resonant frequency is independent of active device parameters. Next we are going to derive the frequency of oscillation. For that we can consider the Weinreich feedback circuit. It consists of series arm and parallel arm. So here Z1 represents the series combination of R1 and C1. Z2 represents the parallel combination of R2 and C2. So this is the simplified diagram of this feedback circuit. So here we can give the input V in across this Z1 and Z2. We can take the feedback signal across this Z2. Okay. Do you all understand this diagram? So next we are going to find out the series impedance and shunt impedance values. So here the series impedance is given as Z1 is equal to the series combination of R1 and C1. So here reactance value can be represented as 1 by J omega C1. 
So this can be further simplified like this. So here Z1 is equal to R1 J omega C1 plus 1 divided by J omega C1. Consider that as the first equation. Okay. Next one is the shunt impedance. It is denoted as Z2 that is equal to R2 in parallel with 1 by J omega C2. So here the parallel formula is R2 into 1 by J omega C2 divided by R2 plus 1 by J omega C2. Then we can simplify this denominator like this. This R2 is multiplied with this value. So R2 into J omega C2 plus 1 the whole divided by J omega C2. So this value, this value divided each other. Then we can get the Z2 value as R2 divided by 1 plus J omega R2 C2. Consider this as the second equation. So now we have obtained the values of Z1 and Z2. You all understand this to one. We are going to find out the current in the feedback network. Current is equal to what? I is equal to V by Z. Correct? According to Ohm's law, I is equal to what? V by Z. Here Z is nothing but the combination of Z1 and Z2. So I is equal to V in divided by Z1 plus Z2. Then the feedback voltage is represented as Vf that is equal to current multiplied with the Z2 value because we are going to get the value of this Vf across this Z2. Correct? So here the current is what? I. So here Vf is equal to I into Z2. Then we can substitute that I value here. Then Vf is equal to V in divided by Z1 plus Z2 into Z2. So this I is replaced with that value. That is the third equation. So next we have to find out the feedback gain of the Weinreich circuit. So here beta is equal to the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage. So here output is Vf, input is Vn. Substitute the value of this Vf in this formula. Then we can get beta is equal to Vf value can be replaced with Vn z2 divided by z1 plus z2 into 1 by V in. V in V in can be divided each other. Then we can get beta is equal to Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2. Consider this as the fourth equation. So next we are going to substitute the first and second equations in this fourth equation. So Z2 can be replaced with the value R2 by 1 plus J omega R2 C2. Z1 can be replaced with the value 1 plus J omega R1 C1 by J omega C1. Here Z2 is R2 by 1 plus J omega R2 C2. So in the next step we can further simplify this denominator value by taking the LCM. So here we can multiply this 1 plus J omega R1 C1 with this value 1 plus J omega R2 C2. Plus R2 is multiplied with this value. We can get the value J omega C1 into 1 plus J omega R2 C2. Then these two values are divided. Then we can move this J omega C1 to the numerator. Finally, we can get the answer as beta is equal to J omega R2 C1. The whole divided by, we can multiply all the terms inside the brackets. Then this value becomes 1 plus J omega R2 C2 plus J omega R1 C1 plus J squared omega squared R1 C1 C1 C2 plus J omega R2 C1. Do you all understand these things? So in the next step, we can further simplify this term because j squared becomes minus 1. j squared is equal to what? Minus 1. So we can group the real term as 1 minus omega squared r1 r2 c1 c2. In these three terms, j omega is a common one. We can take it outside. So plus j omega into r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r2 c1. Okay, so this is the general one, but we do not want the J omega or the imaginary term in the denominator. So we have to rationalize the expression to get the beta value. You all understand this? We do not want the imaginary term in this denominator. So here we are going to rationalize. Rationalize means what? We have to multiply the numerator and denominator with the complex conjugate of this denominator. So here we can multiply the numerator and denominator with the value 1 minus omega squared r1 r2 c1 c2 
minus j omega r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r2 c1. In the next step, we can multiply the numerator and denominator with the complex conjugate of the denominator. So here j omega r2 c1 is multiplied with the complex conjugate. That means the denominator with the minus sign. The same is multiplied with the denominator. Then we can get the value as a squared plus b squared. Here a is the real term 1 minus omega squared r1 r2 c1 c2 the whole square plus the imaginary term is what? Omega squared r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r2 c1 the whole square. So similarly in the numerator we can multiply this j omega r2 c1 with this real value as well as with the imaginary value. Then we can get the beta is equal to omega squared r2 c1 into r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r2 c1. So here j omega r2 c1 multiplied with this j omega. We can get minus j squared. So this minus j squared becomes plus, correct? So that is the real term here. So we can write omega squared r2 c1, r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r2 c1. That is the real term. Here the imaginary term as j omega r2 c1 into 1 minus omega squared r1 r2 c1 c2. Do you all understand this one? So now we have the real term as well as imaginary term with the common denominator. So this is the fifth equation. It is very very important one. We are going to find out the frequency of oscillation from this expression. At resonant condition, XL is equal to XE. That means both reactance values are cancelled each other. Then there is no imaginary term. So in order to find out the frequency of oscillation, the imaginary term of the fifth equation is equated to 0. So here we can take only the imaginary term. What is the imaginary term? Omega R2 C1 into 1 minus omega squared R1 R2 C1 C2 divided by this denominator value is equal to 0. Then we can move this denominator value to this side. 0 multiplied with anything is 0. Then we can move this omega R2 C1 to this side. Again it is 0. So 1 minus omega squared R1 R2 C1 C2 is equal to 0 now. Then we can move this minus to other side as a plus. Then we can get omega squared r1 r2 c1 c2 is equal to 1 then we can get omega squared is equal to 1 by r1 r2 c1 c2 consider this as the sixth equation do you all understand this one so we want to find out the frequency for that we can take the square root value on both the sides then we can get omega is equal to 1 by square root of r1 r2 c1 c2 omega is equal to what 2 pi f from this we can get f is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of r1 r2 c1 c2. This is the frequency of oscillation for Weinbridge oscillator. Under matched or balanced condition r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r and c1 is equal to c2 is equal to c. Then we can get the frequency of oscillation as f is equal to 1 by 2 pi r into c. This is the important formula. Okay. So next we are going to find out the gain of the feedback network that is the beta value for that we can equate the real part is equal to gain so beta is equal to only the real part because imaginary part is zero at maximum frequency so here if r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r and c1 is equal to c2 is equal to c then we can get beta is equal to here it becomes omega squared rc into all the term becomes rc 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 correct the same thing in the denominator also. We can get 1 minus omega squared r squared c squared the whole square plus omega squared into rc plus rc plus rc the whole square. That is nothing but omega squared rc into 3 rc. We can say that is 3 omega squared r squared c squared divided by 1 minus omega squared r squared c squared the whole square plus here it is omega squared 3 rc squared. That is nothing but 9 omega squared r squared c squared. So next we are going to substitute the sixth equation in the above equation. What is the sixth equation? That is omega squared is equal to 1 by r1 r2 c1 c2. Under matched condition omega squared is equal to 1 by r squared c squared. So we can replace this omega squared with the value 1 by r squared c squared. Okay. 
then we can get beta is equal to 3 into 1 by r squared c squared into r squared c squared. So, omega squared is replaced with the value r squared c squared. Here it is 1 minus 1 by r squared c squared into r squared c squared the whole square plus 9 into 1 by r squared c squared into r squared c squared. So, we can simply divide all the terms then we can get the values here it is 1 minus 1 becomes 0 correct. Then it is 3 by 9 that is equal to 1 by 3. So beta value is equal to what now? 1 by 3. This is the value of feedback factor for Bainbridge oscillator. So next we are going to find out the gain of the amplifier circuit. In order to satisfy percussion criterion for the sustained oscillation, A beta is equal to 1. From this A is equal to what? 1 by beta. So we can get the value as 3. So here the gain of the amplifier circuit should be greater than or equal to 3. This is the record gain to provide the maximum output. Finally, the major advantage of this Wainbridge oscillator. Frequency can be varied by varying the capacitance values C1 and C2 simultaneously, which are mounting on the common shaft. Okay. Here that major disadvantage is that the frequency depends on discrete components, okay?